how do I start explaining what really happened? It's a pathetic one. I don't even know how to start it. I don't know where to start from. But definitely, I know I'm going to start from somewhere. The reason behind this story time is for someone out there to actually learn from my own story so that you know how to prepare better when you are going to our dear beloved country, Nigeria. So guys, if you're stumbling on my channel for the very first time, this is Change Your Look UK. And on today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my experience, how I get stuck in Nigeria for over three months. If you want to support me, please support me by subscribing to my channel. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. I do upload new videos every week. So if you don't want to miss any of my videos, please and please again try as much as possible to hit on that subscribe button and press on the notification bell for you to be notified whenever I upload a new video. So without taking too much of your pretty time, let's dive into the story time. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. I've been in UK for more than six years and for the first time I decided to visit Nigeria. Why I actually decided to visit Nigeria was because my best friend, she's like a younger sister to me, she's getting married, she was my ship bridesmaid on my wedding. So I already promised her that whenever she's getting married, I'm not just going to make her or send anything to her, I'm going to be there. Life. So I had to fulfill that promise by traveling to Nigeria to celebrate with her. Oh my God. When I was preparing for this journey, I was so happy. See the way I was preparing. You know, now after six years, you left a country where you was born and bred for over 30 years. And you're going back after six years. You'll be so excited. I was very excited when we were booking the ticket. At first, my husband actually, we booked for 12 days. And even... After we booked for 12 days, the next day, I, I was like, I went to my husband and I was just feeling like I won't be able to stay for 12 days in Nigeria. I can't stay 12 days in Nigeria. That is there a way you can actually um, change the ticket so we can do maybe like 7 or 8 days? And my husband was like, uh uh, it's your best friend that is getting married. You want to assist her, you want to run around, do some things with her, be there before the wedding so you don't just show up as a guest. And I was like, okay, that's true. 12 days. My said, you know, before you know it, it's 12 days already and you think it's even 7 days. And I was like, okay. And then, another little sister of mine, my friend, she's like a younger sister to me, we decided to travel together. Let me not even start beating around the bush how we get to Nigeria. That was not the problem. That was not what we're actually discussing about. Let me just dive to, so that the video is not too long, let me dive to when I was about coming back. So after all the fun, eating all the Nigerian food that we've missed, local restaurants and the rest, I'll be showing, putting some clips so you guys can see the kind of enjoyment that we really had. Eat some nice food. And the day we were supposed to travel back, we went, I was sick. I wasn't fine because I was bitten by mosquito. So um, I was really sick. I was shivering. And it was even that my friend actually arranged our bag. We were shaking out of the hotel. She arranged the bags, everything, even the food stuff we bought. She was the one that helped me to arrange mine and arrange us as well because I was shivering. So we got to the airport, put our luggages. They already told us we have SS luggage and it was fine. To us, it's okay. SS luggage, but we'll, uh, we'll pay for it now, Abby. So they told us, they gave us and the rest. And then they said, my documents. Where you want to, they want to check you in now. Where is your document? Then I brought my electronics copy from my phone and I was showing the immigration guy and the guy was like what do I have to do with your phone I want your document like I said okay oh what what I have on phone I already printed them out so I brought the paper I gave it to him the paper I was like I don't want paper I want a document i was like what is a document you don't want paper the guy even confused me at first he first confused me he was like no i want the document i want this i said i don't understand can you please tell me what you actually want he said you want the document i said look at it now that's the document i have indefinite leave to remain that's my status and the guy was like please you know how rude 
we in Nigeria, when we're walking, when we have one position, we'll act as if we are the mini god of that place. The man was just like, please, I don't have anything to say to you. If you don't have the document, when you have the document, you come and meet me. I don't have but you cannot fly you you cannot fly on this plane. I was like, Are you kidding me? What's just going on right now? I was sick and immediately it's as if I became strong. I was like, Sir, I don't understand what you're saying. What other document do you want? It's written here. My independent leave to remain that I can actually travel anywhere and come back to United Kingdom. And why are you stopping me? He didn't even listen to me anymore. He just left me. And then I went to meet other imi another immigration guy there. And the guy was like, ah, I think what he was saying is that your document. I said, what is the document he's talking about? He said, don't you have any other thing to just prove that you actually live in UK? I now brought out my... There is this um, biometric card that they'll give you, but that mine has expired. So what, how they normally do it if you don't base in UK? When that your five years has expired, before it expired, you apply for the indefinite leave after five years. So I applied for it, they've given me. It means the next thing I'm going to apply for is their passport. After one year, you use that indefinite leave to remain for one year. And the next thing you apply for is the British passport. So I was like, this is what I have. And they said, if you have any other thing, I said, okay, that biometric that has expired, I knew, I know that it has expired. I brought it out. It's, it's just like a card. If you don't know what that is, it's just like a card they give to you. So I showed the guy and the guy, the relation guy was, yes, now, this was what we're talking about. So you have this, why are you wasting our time? This was what, they don't even, even know what to call it in the first place. So the first guy was just beating around the bush with me. I don't understand. He's not even going straight. He don't know what he's asking for. He's just saying document, document. But everything I've showed you is actually document. So he said, this is it. So it was like, it has expired. I said, yes, I know. That's why I, that's why I'm showing you my indefinite leave to remain document is higher than that one. So he said, and since it's expired, I cannot travel now. They can't put me in the plane. I should have, uh -uh. are you kidding me? You cannot put me in the plane. I have document. This is the document. Even on the document, you definitely need to remember when they when they uh, uh, um when they give you the document, it's written underneath there that you can travel anywhere with it. I left that airport. My friend has to travel because she she's an EU, so she had to travel. I left. She actually came into Nigeria with a visa, so they can't stop her. So she had to travel. She left me. She never wanted to go. I was one that even told her, see, please go. If you don't go, they will ask you to buy tickets. They will tell you that they don't have any problem with you. I'm the one that they have problem with. Please, you really have to go. She left and she was crying. I left that airport without knowing what was the next step, what next to do. What should I do next? I was there and I called my husband. I was like, and my friend already dropped me at the airport. She thought maybe I was out traveled now. She was waiting for my call when I get to UK. And I called my husband. I told my husband, darling, you won't believe that these people said I cannot fly, that they cannot access my documents. My husband was just on the phone with me throughout. Now please tell them you have a document indefinitely to remain. They do not print the document. I said I printed it. I showed them. They said they don't want any any uh, 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 any printer coming. They want what they want is that biometric card that they wanted. Ah, Mogbe. I was like, are you kidding me, Abasi? What kind of wahala is this? What kind of wahala? That was how my husband tried to talk to them, and the rest we did not. We could not actually get any good feedback my husband just had to i already dropped my sim the sim of my friend when i got to nigeria i was using her mtn sim i had to give her the sim when she dropped me at the airport i could not even reach my friend it was my husband and i called my friend that ah, my wife is stuck at the airport to go and pick her that was that when she came i was shivering i was shaking because i wasn't feeling fine when i got to the airport so by the time we got to, when we got home, we're like, okay, what's the next step? Mama said, go to the UK immigration, go to, you won't believe that all these parts that we actually went to, they don't even know what I need. They keep asking me that I should go and apply for a visa. My husband was like, are you kidding me? They are, why, why are these people talking like an illiterate? How can you apply for a visa when you have a document? My dear. 
I don't want to be emotional. You guys, you, I don't, I don't want to be emotional. I don't pray for my enemy to actually experience what I experienced. I sat down, I was crying, leaving a little boy of four years with my husband alone. If my husband was not working from home, what would have happened for that th over three months? What would have happened? He was working from home. He said there was a day that he even had an emergency in the office. He had to go to the office with my son to his workplace. <laughs> my dear, if I did, if I, if, I, if I had done this video like a week when I came back, I wouldn't have been able to talk. I was crying. If you ask me, hello, how was your trip? I don't start to cry. I don't they cry because it was not what we didn't plan it we didn't expect it was going to be like that that was how we were waiting let me not just let me not waste your time and after two weeks my husband was writing to our mp and um my husband is colleague he has a colleague that the wife works with the, um um with the home office and the rest they were just helping us give us contact Please uh, talk to this person, talk to this person. That was how we were talking, 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 talking. They said the uh, home office will respond to us after 27 working days. I said, blood of Jesus. So I will sit here for more than one month waiting for response from home office. Ah, BA, we sent to BA. It was BA I used. We sent to BA. BA was like, ah, they are trying to do their investigation. They will get back to us that the BA manager assigned somebody to me and the rest. And they were doing, doing. I stayed for over two weeks. Over two weeks. There was no, we don't know what next to do. We've done all we think we could. Anywhere we go to, they say, ah, you need to apply for visa. You need to apply for visa. So after two weeks, close to three weeks. No, over three weeks. After three weeks, that was when home office got to us and said, what you need is emergency travel permit to leave Nigeria. I said, blood of Jesus. And how come nobody told us this? That all what we need is emergency travel permit to leave Nigeria. That was how we said, ah, we're looking, oh yeah, what's the next available date? We saw Thursday because the home office got to us on Tuesday. On Wednesday, I think on Wednesday was public holiday. Then we saw Thursday and I booked for Thursday. When we booked for Thursday, the next day, BA emailed us that all you need, you actually need, uh, is an emergency travel permit. I was like, hey. And they said the emergency travel permit, it takes three weeks for it to be at maximum three weeks. I was telling my husband that three weeks is too much. So I started praying. I said, please God, if you can do it, if I can get it before three weeks, I will be so happy. I started praying. My dear, we applied first. When you go there, if you don't know, if you are booking for those, whatever, you are booking, it's just like a biometric, you'll take your biometric again. When I went for the appointment on Thursday, they said I took, is it 9.15? So anything that they put 15 past, if it's 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, is normal booking. If it's uh, 9.15, 10, 20 or 10, 15 or anything extra, minutes extra, is for VIP. We didn't know. It wasn't written on the platform, on the website. It was not written. So people were paying 900 and something pounds, almost 1,000 pounds. And the people that they can, they put them as a priority, um, whatever. I don't know how they call it. But they, they tend to attend to them as soon as when they say within 24 hours, 40, sorry, 48 hours or so. Or there's this time limit they put anyways. So the guy said, if I'm not paying for that, then I'll have to give them 40 something thousand. So I had to pay that right there and then. And they gave me the date. And I was praying. I said, these three weeks, I'm not going to stay for three, uh, three weeks. I was praying. I said, God answered my prayer. Answer my prayer. I'm not going to stay for three weeks. For this, I was just faint. I've left my son for more than this. I'm telling you now, it's close to two months. So for close more than a month, going to two months. How would I leave that boy? Four years old boy. I just left food I will eat and the other things I left behind. Food I even prepared. Everything has finished. It's my church member that keep bringing food to the house, to my husband, to my kids, and the rest. I was like, God, what kind of problem is this? What kind of problem is this? I was just there. When we went for the biometry, after we went there, 
is it after the next week Thursday they said ah they've um, submitted the document and the rest that was that we're waiting no two weeks past my my people I did not get no response I was crying I will wake up I will cry I will sleep I will cry my friend will go to I have to, I didn't even, why did I jump that part? When I checked out of the hotel, <laughs> when the bees hitting my neck, I had to go to my friend's place to leave. I stayed in my friend's place for close to, close to two months, close to two months in my friend's place. And I was like, are you kidding me? I was there, I would cry. She walks in the bank. Once she go out and come back, she'll be like, I know you've been crying. I'll say, no, I wasn't crying. Mm -hmm. Be deceiving yourself. I know you are crying. I will wake up. I will cry. I will wake up. I will. I will sleep. I will cry. I will pray. I will fast. I will pray, my dear. That was how we were calling home office. So home office, what is going on? Why are they taking too much time? They said they have a lot of backlog that they have to deal with before dealing with mine. There are people that they already have. They will have to attend to them before it gets to my turn. So depends on when you made your application. That's when they will actually attend to. Oh my God, we are not saying. We said it's an emergency. Oh. It's an emergency. My husband was. Oh, thank God, thank God. Ah, oh, may God bless him. My husband was just on this case. Like, please, this is an emergency. She has to come back. She's the one taking care of the kids. I'm supposed to be at work, but I'm not at work. I'm at home taking care of the child because she's not around. It had, it, it's an emergency. You put your treat it as treat it as emergency. And they were like, and thank God that day my husband was talking to them. My son actually had an appointment in the hospital. And I was supposed to be the one to take him to the hospital. Then my husband my husband was like, ah, this is an emergency. He's supposed to that I have an appointment. So he, he actually took picture of the appointment, the appointment date and everything. He took it to them and he, and he emailed it to them that this is the appointment that the son is supposed to go to and now he will be the one to leave his work to take the child to this to this appointment and normally it's the wife that is supposed to do it so this is an emergency when the home office had that they said ah we're sorry that we didn't know that is this is this um is this complicated so now they can actually take it as an emergency emergency case oh i was so happy Immediately they told us that they've taken it. The next, the, like in five minutes time, they've already told us that, that they're on my file. They fixed my file. Oh my God. Thank God for advanced country that will actually be concerned about your family. If it was that, like our place, Nigeria, wait to consign them. If you like, you're the one taking the child to, it's none of their business. But because of that, they prioritize my own document. Take it as an emergency document and they start working on it. And within a few days, was it two or three days before then, my husband called, my husband said, ah, we need to agree as a family, we need to pray. You see this, uh, whatever. Somebody called me and the person told me that, ah, do you know what has happened because of this kind of situation? Some people are stuck in Nigeria up to date to hope they are not hope you are not going to do Christmas in this in that Nigeria. Ah, I started crying. I didn't sleep that day. I said, Jesus, what kind of wala is this one? Another one came up. They said, ah, Omicron, blah 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 blah. They said, ah, hope uh, they've been taking a red list to different different country or they've been tagging different country red list and the rest. Hope it's not going to get to Nigeria. I said, Jesus, well, I started. We started praying. My husband said, ah, we're going to agree on a date. And God is so faithful. What I want to tell you guys, eh? Anything you do, no matter what you do, put God. Put God. Put God. No matter how little, even if you don't know him too much, provided you believe and you call on him, seriously, we'll answer you. That was how, the date we picked, that was the same day. <laughs> on Thursday. We pick on Thursday. And it was the same day in the morning that, um, and the email came in. I didn't even check. My husband was the one that told me it was with my laptop in, in UK. It was like, darling, I was doing my money exercise. It was like, please get up. I just saw two emails or your this thing. I think they've sent your um, biometric. Go and check it. Go and check it. Go and immediately, I just, I didn't, I didn't take my battle. I just brushed and I wear my clothes. I rushed there. Got there. Got the, whatever. I saw the 
emergency travel permit in my document. That was how I got this document and I said I'm going to travel the next day. And that next day, I didn't book for flight too. Because my ticket, the, day, the first day they bounced me, they said that they were going to open their, that they are going to open the ticket for me. That's because I actually went there with somebody that is that is known in the society as in somebody that you know how Nigeria is. That was why they were able to give us that option. That was why they were able to give us that option. Even online, BA was like, even if I had to, when we not told them that we've gotten it, my, email, my husband emailed them that we've gotten the document that they wanted, the emergency travel permit, so we need to travel. They said we we're going to pay almost, is it 1,000 plus pounds that we're supposed to pay to book the next ticket. Glory be to God, we didn't end up paying. But I flew. <sighs> oh my God. When I got to the airport that day, when the guy, the guy that was supposed to help me was telling me that, you know what? You might fly, you, but I'm thinking it's on Saturday that you're going to fly. Because we might get there and there might not be space in the plane for them to book you in. But if it's on Saturday, mind you, I got the, the travel permit on Thursday. And BA normally fly every morning from Nigeria to UK. So I cannot travel that day again because it was already late. I had to travel the next day on Friday. So when I told, when we got there, we were waiting, we we're now waiting for the manager. That I, the manager that can book us now. Because our ticket is open. We were waiting. The first, I, the first time in my life that I got to the airport, it was my present that people that works in the airport started coming. It was my present, they started doing their meetings. They normally do meetings every morning, I didn't know. Before they would arrange their seats. I started attending to customers. My dear, I was there. I got to the airport before 5 o'clock. 5 a.m. in the morning. I did not sleep. When we got there, the first person I actually saw was the manager. But I think he was just looking around and trying to make sure that everything is in order. Then he went. They said some um, personalities came and he went to welcome them. And we waited for hours. Before he came up, and when he came up, ah, may God bless that guy. He just came up and he said, and I was telling the guy that was with me that, ah, that's the manager, that's the manager. And he went to him. And he, the manager just came and said, why didn't you meet my people? If I was not here, what would have happened? Eh? You would have missed this flight again. Please go and meet my people. He just followed, he just said I should follow him. And we got there, he said, please give our ticket to fly. That was how I flew on Friday. The biggest testimony was that I flew on Friday. On Saturday, UK tagged Nigeria as red list. That nobody, if you don't live, even if you live in UK, once you come, you go to those that are hotel, that they will give you whatever they don't know to eat. And you will pay how much? 2,000 plus for the hotel. And I, Jesus, I, I was just screaming. I was just, in short, when I was giving testimony in church, you guys need to be there. You guys need to be there. I was screaming because my tag of the month of December in my church was the month of Hallelujah. That was the tag of the month, the month of Hallelujah. And all I could, when I, when I was exhausted praying, I don't even know what to pray about. All I was screaming was, I will shout my Hallelujah. I will shout my hallelujah. I will shout my hallelujah. That was all I was saying. And I just want to tell you guys, if you are living in a place, try to have like a family. They say where you live is your family. That That's what, when I went to Nigeria and came back, that was when I understand that where you live, that's where, that's where you call home. That's where you call home. Some of us living abroad, for many years, and we still think Nigeria or Africa is our home. It's where you live. You see your family. Uh, you, fa you travel once in 10 years. Like the, 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 the travel that, the, this trip that I made was my first trip back to Nigeria. After six years. And then I realized that Nigeria is no longer my home. And about the document, when you are traveling to Nigeria, please, if you have indefinite leave to remain, once they've given you that indefinite leave to remain, 
what they they don't tell you is that you have to apply for a biometry then they will give you card after that five years on has expired when they give you the indefinite leave to remain for you to travel in and out you have to apply for a biometry a biometric card that can take you anywhere you're going to and bring you back they don't tell you that i went to a um to a gathering with some um friends my husband friends on christmas day and when i mentioned this situation the the woman was like screaming like do you know i was planning to go to nigeria and all i actually have is that electronics uh, um um indefinite leave to remain that they sent but they didn't tell us that we're supposed to apply for they won't tell you they did not say it and it's so annoying we almost wanted to sue they did not say it it's not written anywhere there but what you need to do if you have indefinite leave to remain for those of us that are watching this video you need a biometry once you get it apply for a biometry apply for it then that is what you can use to travel anywhere you are going to you are going you are going and that is what you need so that is what they did not tell us we we're not aware of because if it's something that is public if you know my husband you will know that it's that kind of mind that wants every details he reads back to back of anything he will read it he will he reads a lot he goes to the internet to search for information a lot a lot of people when they want to do documents and some other stuff they will call him ah is there what are we supposed to do what are we not supposed to do what are we supposed to how are we supposed to do it he gives them information it was not on the site it was not there so if you are having indefinite leave to remain please apply for a biometry in case you have to travel because for once i said it in the public and somebody stood up and said i never knew about that they didn't tell us i have indefinite leave to remain but i didn't know i'm supposed to apply for a biometry when i want to travel and she was supposed to travel for uh that barrier can you imagine that's that she'll be coming back she'll be stuck and they said during that period i was stuck a lot of people were also stuck in nigeria a lot of family were stuck in nigeria that could not come back because they don't they, they're not informed they don't know it was not written. Even in the indefinite leave to remain, you see when they say in email, they say you can travel anywhere. You can go in and come in anytime. But that's not true. If you don't apply for the biometry, if you cannot go in and come in anytime. You cannot. When BA was telling us that, ah, if the home office think you can travel with this, then tell the home office to write a letter. They said, because if we allow you to enter this flight, they are going to UK government is going to charge us two thousand pounds, two thousand pounds for even allowing you to fly on our aircraft. And no more. said they are not permitted to write any any uh, notes or any letter to anybody. And the next thing when they got back to us, they told us that what we need is an emergency travel permit. If you already traveled and you are stuck in Nigeria or anywhere you are stuck in, please, all you need is an emergency travel permit emergency travel permit that is what you need go to the government website you'll be able to find it there emergency travel permit if you are stuck and you are seeing this this video all you need is an emergency travel permit now that, that's the reason why i'm actually doing this video just to share my experience and then to for somebody who doesn't have an idea that this thing is actually happening to just gain some knowledge from it and gain some information that they can use as well that's the reason for this video and hope this video has helped one or two person out there if you find this video interesting please don't hesitate to hit on that subscribe button press on the notification bell for you to be notified whenever i upload a new video i do upload new videos every week so if you don't want to miss any of my video please support me support me support me by subscribing to my channel and make sure your notification bell is on and when i upload a, a video please don't hesitate to watch my video and drop a comment you know how much if you've been on this channel you know how much i love to read comments please drop your comment i would really like to see your opinion about this my my story time hope i did well anyway i'm not a good storyteller you can see that i'm actually missing it up here and there i'm not a good storyteller but 
I I told myself that I'm going to share this with you guys. You guys are like family to me. So definitely I have to share it with you guys. So you guys will know the reason why I've not been posting for even some months ago. I was actually, I did a video when I was talking about the course I was doing. I was doing a course and after then, I, while the course was going on, while I was done with the course, that was when I actually did this travel that actually ended up to be like, so for a long time now my channel has really been slacking please guys you guys should watch the video and um drop a comment and um thank you so much for watching i love you guys and i'm going to see you guys on my next video bye